Hi, it's Jess here from nigeza.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. I am bringing you the project that I made for the Ink Stamp Share special blog hop um, that we do once a month. We put it in uh, as an extra to our normal monthly blog hop at the beginning of uh, first lockdown. And here we are in lockdown two and we're still doing it. Um, so I am casing but changing um a project by um the paper pixie so she made this sort of christmas bauble and i made this prototype this is from retired stuff um and i was making it with my sister on um over over the internet and um she made it she went oh a little miniature will be able to fit in there and i went oh what a really good idea yes it will um but then we discovered that not all miniatures are the same size now i do like my gin so we've got um i found that these two bottles would fit this one quite nicely just opens up there you've got this ribbon feeding through and uh, you can fit a little miniature in there and it will close up. I won't do it, but that that works quite nicely. And um, so my other sisters and um, my niece were like, oh, yeah, I want to make some of them. So we did get together just before lockdown too to make some. And then we discovered my niece has got a bottle of this for a present. And, um, and then we discovered that when we put this one in, it don't close. It um, protrudes above. So I was like, all right then, I'll go and do some resizing. So I got uh, I got some cardstock. I got practicing. This was me making it taller. And, and that does work. It's a bit taller and a bit wider. But you have to use 11 and a half. Um, width for that and I thought oh lots of people um, from America watch this and they don't have their cardstock is 11 so they would have to use 12 by 12 so I was like that's really not going to work is it so then I tried another size and it wasn't quite big enough and then finally third time lucky I got the ultimate size so we're sorted we're cooking on gas it still doesn't fit one of these but it fits most most is what I found. So what we need, so my say my uh, my measurements will be different to um, the paper pixie, but some of them are the same, actually. So I will link to her uh, post as well in my blog post. So I am using 10 and a half by eight and a quarter. So in the UK, that's our normal width of cardstock. America, you have eight and a half. So you have to just trim a quarter of an inch off to get it now i'm just going to get my school board it's down on the floor and i've got to gingerly bend down because i've hurt my back which i didn't actually do anything to hurt my back i was literally pulling my socks up this morning and um and it suddenly went oh that hurts jess so that was fabulous so just like um the paper pixie these ones are exactly the same it's these ones that i've changed so we're going to score at one and a quarter oh and i slipped there one and a quarter two and a half so they're all one and a quarter um measurements three and three quarters five six and a quarter i will have all of these measurements on the blog seven and a half eight and three quarters and ten and then we swivel around to the short side and this is where i change to um what the paper pixie did so we are going to score at one and a quarter four and an eighth and seven so what I've done is I've given us it to be longer in these 
two sections and that extra height allows us to fit those other bottles in. Now, the other thing we need to do is on every other one of these. Now, it's, I know it's going to be hard for you to see, but I've got a template I'll show you in a sec. So we're going to score. We've got in every other one of these squares, we want to score a line down the centre. So we're going to score just to that first score line. So we're going to score at one and seven eighths, stopping at that score line. And then four and three eighths, again, stopping at that score line. Six and seven eighths. And then finally, nine and three eighths. And then we want to do that again at this end, but because you can't do that way because you've only got a half an inch there. So we've got to, we've just scored like that. So we just flip it. So we're working on the wrong side, but it doesn't actually matter. So we're going to continue. We're going to do that again. Repeat one and seven eighths. So we're now level with that one. Four and three eighths. Six and seven eighths and nine and three eighths. Okay, keep your scores tall, but we can get rid of. Oh, I can't bend. Oh, dear me, that hurt. Um, and then we're going to take a ruler, and I'm going to show you on my template now. So that's what we've got underneath. So we have scored all these straight lines and now we're going to draw these triangles in. And so you're matching the score line there that you've made with the corner there. And then likewise on the other sides. OK. So I will put a picture of that on the blog so that you will be able to see it. So we're just making that mark there. I've got a nice grid pad here which gives me a good soft backing. You can use you can use your stamping up catalogue. That will work and I know that's what um, my niece usually uses a magazine or that. So I'm doing it helps my brain to do it all the lines going in this direction and you can see why it didn't matter about those score lines being on the underside because it's just so that we've got a mark to go by and then we'll just go on the other side drawing in those lines so I remember when I saw this, I saw one of my teammates um, make this. She posted it on my Facebook group and um, I was like, God, that's stunning. Love it. And um, I thought, oh, that looks awfully complicated. But indeed, it's not. I mean, it's time consuming to, to do this bit, but actually it's quite easy to actually execute. So there we've got all our, our lines drawn in. I don't know why I'm putting them up there because I will lose them if I don't put them back in the place that they live. And so now we're going to go and score all of these Just the straight lines for now because we're going to stick the decoration on because it's easier to stick your paper on now than when it's together. Ask me how I know. <laughs> If I watch a video tutorial, I often just go, oh, yeah, I know what you're doing. And then I'd like to turn it off and then just do my own thing. And then I realise it would have been easier if I did it a different way. 
so just doing that not bothering about the uh, triangle bits uh, for now so now we need the the dsp so i am using the this lovely page here to decorate these big bits and then for the triangle bits i'm going to use the black glitter paper because i think that would be really really pretty and i did think that i might do this and change its color so i'm going to cut my strip off and then we'll change the color so we need eight little rectangles and they need to be one and an eighth by two and three quarters so i am just going to cut a two and a quarter inch strip off which is twice twice the width that I need and then I'm going to colour this whole strip before I cut it down because I just thought that would be easier so I'm just going to bring in a bit of a bit of scrap paper there to do my blending and I'm blending it with Blackberry Bliss because that's my favourite and uh, and I'm using one of our sponge brayers. Oh gosh, that squeaked, didn't it? Um, to do it, you can use. I do use um, makeup brushes sometimes to blend, but I uh, ended up with these sponge brayers. They were a mistake, um, and um, and so I've got them now. So I may as well use them. And I just, and it does go quite quickly. And you can build the colour up as much as you want. So the more ink you put on it, the darker it becomes. And I just love the look of Blackberry Bliss on this. I have another project which I've not shared yet where I've done this exact thing. And, uh, just love how it turned out so i think this against the black will look stunning i hope well i can't fail it's blackberry bliss isn't it can't fail to look stunning right i'm gonna put some more on and i'm gonna go the other way You see why I did this, the whole sheet, rather than uh, cut me two little strips out. So I think this is much easier. And you see, it's now getting really, really dark. And I say the, uh, the colour builds up depending on how much you put on. And I really like that. I want a bit more at that end. That may end up ended up cut off. So you get four rectangles out of each 12 inch length. So that is all you need in the DSP for this bauble, which is brilliant because it means it goes a long way. So now I just need to cut that, I'll get rid of that now. So I'm now going to cut this down to one and an eighth. So that's one and an eighth there, one and an eighth there. Yep, right in half. Just line that up again. I can see the marks at the bottom as well as at the top. Marvellous. We are cooking on gas. So there we are. And then we need it to be two and three quarters that way. So cut these all up. 
two and three quarters. scraps so now we just bring in our little thing and kind of look if they go in in a direction and they're going to get stuck on those flat sections. Now you could possibly be a bit clever and these may well join onto each other. So now I'm just gonna use a bit of Tomboy and get these all stuck down. So this is Tombow in this glue pot I just decant it into here. It might need a pin in it. It's feeling a bit like it does need a pin in it. Yeah, that's better. So just sticking them in that. We've got a very small margin. It's like an eighth of an inch difference. So we've got like a sixteenth all the way around so I didn't want a huge gap. I'm kind of going by this what the paper daisy did and it paper pixie not paper daisy <laughs> paper pixie did and uh, Julie isn't it and um, I think when you're using smaller surface area that um, a smaller margin works better. And um, I didn't, I wanted to make this not Christmas necessarily, so you could show that actually you could use this as, as, a, as a gift box at any time. And it's just a bonus that it can hang up on a Christmas tree. So it doesn't have to. It could just be, as I say, a nice, a nice gift box. So that's so that's them all stuck down there. So now we need to get the triangle bits for this. Now, in the paper pixie version of it, um, she's just put triangles in, and she cuts hers out of a rectangle and cuts all the triangles in the same way. But I want to actually put some up the side as well i want to cover the the whole lot just give it a little bit of extra bling so i'm using this lovely um glittery glittery paper now i've cut half of them out and i thought i'll just show you how i cut the other half okay so glimmer paper or glitter paper sometimes that can blunt your your blade um quicker so what I always do is I keep my old one. So when I change them, I uh, keep my old one and I sort of put a label on there, used. OK, so I can now use that to cut glimmer paper and I'm not going to blunt um, this one. I've also written when I change the blade. So this one 
Um, it was the first time I changed it. So my original blade that came with my trimmer probably lasted me a year. And this one's been in since 24th of May. So, and I craft all the time. So you've got a little bit at the bottom here where it's wider. And that is where you will be able to get your trimmer out. You see there where it's a bit wider? And that is the point at which you can lift your blade out. You can't do it when it's up in the air, but and uh, you just it just comes out. And because I want it to come out, it's not coming out. So there. So I'm going to leave that up there, so I know where it is, and then that just goes down through there and on really easily. So. I've already cut an inch strip off this because I've done it, um, one of them already. So you need these to be one inch by two and five eighths. So we just want an inch strip off. So I've already cut an inch strip off. So this is now 11 inches. So I'm going to go to 10 there and it does match up with the one there. So do it whichever way you want. And then I'm going to cut it off. So with this strip, I'm doing it on the back side, so it's not on the the um, glitter side. And then we want them two and five eighths. So again, you just need a two inch strip off your, your 12 by 12, and then you'll get your four out of this. So it's two and five eighths. So that's one eighth past the two and a half. So just take them off, two and a half, and another eighth, two and a half, and another eighth, two and a half, and another eighth. And then we just get a little spare bit that we don't need, but I will keep. Now, you might find, because, as I say, this is... Um, one that I have used. There might be a slight bit of flaking. We just take a nail file and you can take them off. Rather that than prematurely blunt, blunt your blade. In the old trimmer, you used to have a little, a little um, bit for storing them underneath. You haven't with this one. But I say, I just store it with the one I got. So now I'm just going to take that off, slip the other one in. And then we're good to go again. And I say, I write used on it. So I know and I'm going to put that back in my drawer. So I know I'm... No, I'm all sorted. Okay, so then what we've got to do with these is we need to mark the half, the halfway point. So it's an inch, so it's just at half an inch. Use a ruler, use your scoreboard, whichever is the easiest. Gonna take my pencil, there we go, and I'm just going to mark there at the half inch bit. On all of them. Could use your grid mat, so that I've got it on the centimetre side because the other side is dirty. Okay, and then you can draw from that point just to this edge if you want to. So you've got your 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 cutting lines. And then you can see where to trim. But I don't really bother with that. I just using my little trimmer, you can use the main trim if you want. So all I do is I put 
I put the half inch bit at the top and the corner bit at the bottom so I know where to where to slice. So you end up with a triangle bit and two two bits. Not perfect, I haven't done a point there, but you won't see it that much. Now I've kept them together, so each one that I cut, I've then put paper clip around it so I know which ones match up with each other and that is all I did on all of them. I could do with my glasses, I think that's how I managed to not make it. See I did that one better. So they're not necessarily exact, but they're good enough. And I think that was something that Julie said in hers with her method of doing it. She said they're not perfect, but they are good enough. I don't think handmade stuff needs to be perfect. If you want it perfect, buy something that's been cut by a machine. But what's the fun of that? Let's make our own, make them quirky, make everyone unique. And people, I think, really appreciate the personal touch of a lovely handmade gift box. So I know that my sisters and my niece want to make these for little Christmas gifts for colleagues so ideal for that put a little miniature in and a super present there we are and that's the last one so I won't put that one away because I can now I've got them ready to stick on so I'll just get my Tombow out So, stick that one in the middle there. So, that leaves a nice little margin. Pull it down a sec. Nice little margin all the way around there. And then these little bits that we cut off go up the sides. And I just think that makes some extra little bit of luxury with these. And I think just the extra little effort makes for such a nice little gift. So there they, so there they are. Okay, so I'm going to carry on and stick those in, but I'll do it speeded up. So that's them all stuck on there. And so now we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out each of these squares that have got the line down it. So 
the simplest way is to cut straight up. So on the squares that haven't got down the line down the middle, I'm going to cut up just on the inside of each of the score lines so that they don't have any score marks on them. So straight up. Straight up there. And we're going to cut this one off. So I'm just going to tab that in there and then cut that off there. So we'll do the same on the other side, up the inside of all these score lines. And then this one will just notch in and then take that all the way across there. Just going to cut that score line off a little bit better. And so then I'm going to fold in the one I don't want to cut off and then cut off the one I do want to cut off. So it is cutting off those squares. Don't throw those squares away just yet. Okay, same on this side. Didn't quite get to the end there. There we go. Okay, so you've got that going on. Okay, now take one of these squares that you've, you've cut down, so it's got a mark in the middle that way, fold it in half the other way, and then you've got a cross there so you know where the centre point is. So you can take your little pokey tool and you've got yourself a little point there in the centre and then get a hole punch. Um, we used to have a little hole punch in the catalogue. I've got copper dial so that is what I will be using and so I'm using this you only need them at one end so it will be at the top and then the bottom will be stuck down so you choose so this is slightly directional so this is the top so gonna lay that over the top there, I've got my little eighth of an inch. It's going in, um, so it's one and a quarter, so it's going in half an inch plus an eighth. So half an inch plus so kind of can cut that down to help. And then that will go in and punch and we get a hole, not slightly centred, quite centred, but it will do. So you can, difficult because this is black, to actually see where the hole is, but they're all slightly off. You could draw your squares on here if you wanted, but again, you've got the trouble problem of actually seeing through. But I'm sure that will be fine. I'm sure my others won't be exact either. So there we have that. So I can bin those now. And so now what we need to do is to get these 
diagonal score lines to fold over. So they will just fold over and you can come in with your bone folder and give them a bit of an extra burnish as well. So each of them need putting in. So not a quick project, but sometimes you don't want a quick project. You want the fun of sitting and having a good old craft. And don't necessarily want to do lots. And I do love making Christmas decorations. I say this one isn't necessarily for Christmas. This is the sort of thing I would love to receive as a birthday present. It's nearly my birthday. Matter of fact, when you see this, it was my birthday yesterday. Um, so. Yeah, and as purple, and particularly Blackberry Bliss, this is my favorite color. This would be a perfect gift for me, especially if you put a bottle of gin in it. Not flavoured though. I'm going to put a flavoured gin bottle in this, but that would not be my choice. Have I done them all? Yeah. Yeah, so they're all done. So now we need to put some glue on this and we can start assembling it. So I'm going to use Tombow again. So that is my glue of choice. Could use Stamp and Seal Plus and you could use tear and tape. You want a strong glue, because it is a 3D project, so we want strong glue for that. Okay, and then this is the base, and this is gonna be stuck together. So if you have a look at it like that, you've got two opposites each other, so we're going to glue those down. on top of each other. Just hold those together whilst it sticks. Doesn't take long for Tombow to stick, which is why I like it. And then I'm gonna put a bit of glue on there. So fold that one over. And where you've creased, it just all folds in really nicely and then that goes over as well and then you can turn it over and you can get your bone folder and you can give it a wrap on the inside like so so you can see that's coming together nicely. And this would be the point at which you would put your bottle in. And this is one of the reasons for choosing that colour, because I'm using this um, rhubarb and ginger. It's my sister's favourite, not mine. I like gin. Don't mess with gin. Is uh, Don't mess with gin and don't mess with cheese. So that fits in really lovely in there. And the ribbon I'm going to use is our glitzy organdy ribbon. I thought that would go perfect with it. So you want to strip about 10 inches will be sufficient, which is the length here of my grid mat. So cut that. Quite nice to have my scissors. Don't matter. Use those ones. And what we're going to do is get rid of my glue I don't need that now we are going to tie a knot that's annoying isn't it there we go so we're going to tie a knot in the bottom of this it's 
quite stiff organdy ribbon and it's got the glitter on it but we can get there so push the knot down to the bottom okay and then we're going to feed our ribbon through our hole might need pokey tool for this i'm going to use my scoring stylus to poke it through there we go i did one that was for a different video and uh, i used really thin ribbon and it just went straight through me all so you're doing the two opposites like you did on the bottom pull that up come on there we go That one. I don't know where the seam is that can kind of make you see which one you want to be the back of the front and to be fair it's not obvious so I'm sure you won't notice so put that one through that one was easier don't understand that and this is where you kind of see that actually trying to get these holes directly in the centre does give you a better look. And that is that. You can add a little bit of a decoration to it if you wanted to. You could put a label on it if you're giving it as a gift or you could just hang it on the tree. They would be some special Christmas treats on the tree. Who needs chocolate? And <laughs> you can have a nice G and C. <laughs> Could have both, couldn't you? So that is my sort of glamorous um, little uh, little bauble. Nice little present there. And uh, yeah, hope you like it. So it is just a little bit smaller, uh, bigger rather than this original size. And, uh, and you can see the difference between having the glimmer paper on all sides. It just makes it look a little bit more sort of glitzy. So hope you like that. Do you know, you could do a, a few of those all the way around, couldn't you? See me prototypes, that would be nice. That's a, could do a sort of an advent calendar-ish with it not that you'd fit 24 around but you know what i mean so there we go all the details will be on my blog i'll have the little template on there as well so you can follow it easy enough and um yeah i hope you give it a go and do share um i do have a facebook group that you can join and uh, share your creations and i also have a facebook group with my friend jill um come crafting with jill and jess which you can also join as well we have challenges and things on there uh, for you and do a little bit of live crafting together as well okay so um the blog hop that this came from will also be linked in my blog which is linked directly below as well so you can go see what everybody else has been making um as well so see you soon bye for now oh and all this shop links if you want to buy anything um will also be down below and on my blog as well Okay, bye for now.